Hello, hello, hello. Yep, it's me again. Round number four for developmental psychology. Today we've got a little more social development, but two specific topics. Number one, attachment. Are you attached to anybody? Does anybody say you're attached to the hip to somebody? Hmm. Maybe good, maybe bad. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, anyways, and we're going to talk about parenting too. I know all y'all love your parents. I know you love how they parent you. I'm sure they do a perfect job. And there's never any arguments in your house about how they parent. So um, I don't even know why I'm talking about this. But anyways, let's start out with monkeys. Yay, monkeys. Um, monkeys are cute. Uh, this guy, Harry Harlow, did an experiment. You're going to watch the video. Um, he, as you see in this picture, had raised monkeys with two surrogate mothers. One was just wire with a bottle you can see there. So to eat, they had to go to the wire mother. The other surrogate mother was covered in cloth and much more comfy. Uh, no food, just comfort. As you can see, it's a good picture here of the monkey obviously needs to eat, um, but stays on the cloth mother to eat. So something he learned from this, here you go, uh, body contact is very important. Uh, we want as little as babies, little babies, all babies are little, don't need to say that. Um, as babies, we want to be held. We want to feel other human beings and skin to skin contact. Maybe you've heard that before. Um, what this will lead to is an attachment, hopefully a safe haven or maybe a secure base to which that child or you and me can go explore. All right, and I'll talk more about that here in just a second. But um, it's almost, it's like the opposite. I like to think of it in that the more as a little kid you're attached to your parents, it's actually the more you're going to be independent later in life. Uh, children who know, do not feel attachment with their parents when they're younger tend to be a little more timid uh, when trying new things. I believe this is because people who have secure attachments with their parents um, know that if they go out in life and they fail at something, they can come home and know that they're still going to be loved. Kids that don't have a, a secure attachment might not believe that if something goes wrong in life. The, this critical period, uh, just a little bit time after you're born, uh, very, very important. Very important when you have kids uh, to make this attachment very close to when they were born. Um, another guy, Conrad Lorenz. Conrad Lorenz um, studied animals and imprinting. Obviously, you can see in this picture over here, these baby geese have imprinted to him and they follow him wherever he's going. If you are seeing baby goose, geese, <laughs> um, they imprint to their mothers. Um, if they're walking, they're usually, if they have babies, they're walking in a line behind them. Uh, but Conrad Lorenz, wanted to show how animal, these baby geese can do it to people also. So for humans, this is called attachment. We want to be attached to someone when we're younger. And again, I should say this does not have to be a mom or dad. Hopefully it is. Uh, but it can be any adult that you have a secure attachment with, and it can work out fine. Um, but this is very interesting what Conrad Lorenz found. It also works with dogs imprinting. So. That's kind of cute. Oh, everybody says, oh, that's so cute. Wow. Okay. Anyways, uh, another lady I want to introduce to you is Mary Ainsworth. So we had to recap the important people here. Harry Harlow, monkeys and attachment. Watch the video. Um, Conrad Lorenz, imprinting and animals, baby geese. And then we have Mary Ainsworth here. All right. Uh, she came up with this experiment called the strange situation. Uh, she wanted to know what type of attachment kids had, and if they had a secure attachment, how do they act in certain situations? If they had an insecure attachment, how do they act in certain situations? If they have an ambivalent or anxious attachment, how do they act 
in certain situations. So the experiment was set up. Um, you have a mom and a baby in a room. A stranger comes in. And eventually the mom leaves, leaves the baby with the stranger. What does the baby do? 30 seconds, a minute later, the mom comes back. The second thing they look at, what does the baby do when the mom comes back? All right. Um, a majority of the children, when placed in this situation that I just explained, uh, will display a secure attachment, which is fantastic. All right. I, I want you to know that having a secure attachment with your children is not a difficult thing to do. Uh, you take care of them. You comfort them when they need it. You hold them. You love them. You tell them that you will most likely have a secure attachment with your kids. Uh, be a sensitive, response, responsive mother or father, okay? It doesn't just have to be the mother. So Ainsworth attachment styles, let me go through this. What they learned through doing this strange situation experiment, 66% of the children exhibited a secure attachment, which was fantastic. Um, they went to their mother for comfort when the stranger came in, so that's a good sign. Like, I, I feel comfortable going to my mom. We like that. Um, when the mother would leave, the child would cry. That is a perfectly normal thing. Like, what child wants is comfortable being left with a stranger, right? Um, but was also happy when the mother came back. So those are three things that they witnessed. Um, when the stranger came in, went to the mother for comfort. When the mother left, the baby cried. When the mother came back, the baby was happy. You check off all those boxes in this experiment, you have a secure attachment to your mother or caregiver or father or whoever it may be. The other one, which it would be the opposite, obviously, an insecure attachment. We had about 22% of the babies studied, uh, displayed an insecure attachment. So when the stranger came in, very little of the baby going to the mother for comfort and stuff, be like, oh, strange person, let me go to my secure base. Well, not as much. You didn't see that as much. Uh, so they didn't really see them as a secure base, possibly. The mother leaves. Not much, much distress. There's not much crying, right? The baby might just go back to playing. When the mother comes back, there is no like, oh, yay, hey, mom, I love you. Good to see you. I'm so glad you came back. It's like, oh, hey, there you are. Keep playing with my toys. OK, um, this may be caused by distant mothers. Uh, the mother's there. Maybe they don't. They're not interacting with the child as much as they should. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they neglected it a little bit, possibly when they were younger and stuff. So. Um, so to recap this style, little comfort, little um, going around the mother. No visible signs of distress when the mother leaves and then doesn't really care when the mother comes back. The third one, which about we had about 12% of the participants display the ancient or ambivalent attachment style. Um, these kids did not use the mother's secure base, uh, but what they did do was actually cling to the mother. It's almost like they they didn't feel comfortable leaving the mom's side to go to the other side of the room to play with a toy or to explore. Okay, remember I said, if you have a secure attachment, you are more likely to be independent as a teenager and moving forward in your life because you feel you have a secure base. If it's an insecure attachment or anxious and ambivalent attachment, you're not so sure about that secure base. And these kids right here cling to their mother uh, because they don't know if they're going to be okay when their mom leaves, all right? They get upset when the mom leaves. They're angry when they returned, uh, which is not what we want to see. Um, overbearing parents, maybe controlling mothers, helicopter parents can cause this insecure attachment, also known as anxious and ambivalent. So let me repeat here. Um, oh, well, I'll go to the slide, but... Uh, you want the secure attachment. Love your kid. Hold your kid. Don't neglect it. Feed it when it's hungry. Pick it up when it's crying. And you should be just fine. That way, um, when strangers come around, they look to their parents as 
a strong, secure base that they can trust. If a parent leaves, yeah, you're upset your parents left. Maybe you'll be fine playing with the babysitter. But when they come back, you're also happy. Uh, so that is fun. Now, what about daycare? This is actually kind of a big topic uh, among parents um, every now and then. Like, hold on. I have to work. I got to send my kid to daycare. Is that okay? Like, I hate dropping off my little baby at daycare, but I have to work. I wish I could stay home with my kid. Good news. Um, if you were, went to daycare or if you had a stay-at-home parent, uh, didn't have to go to daycare, um, or, you know, in your life when you have kids and what happens, it's okay if you have to send them to daycare, but here is my advice. Find a good daycare. Um, as long as they have people at the daycare that are taking care of them, responding to them, feeding them, comforting them, loving them, just like you would at home, they're going to be just fine. But we also know that uh, there are a lot of bad daycares, so be careful. Pick wisely. Um, all right, last topic. Let's talk about parental influences. I'm going to introduce you to a lady named Diana Baumrein. Diana Baumrein. Three parenting styles that she observed through her studies. Authoritarian. This is uh, my way or the highway. Permissive. I like to think of these parents as they want to be friends maybe with their kids. Or maybe they just don't care what they do. And then you have authoritative who kind of falls right in the middle of those two. Yeah, they're going to have rules but they're also gonna to speak to you and understand you and let you kind of maybe have to say in something, possibly, okay? Um, so just some questions to think about. Which one do you like? Which one do you think you'll be when you become a parent? Which one do you think you'll never use? Uh, it's very interesting because depending on what your parents use uh, out of these three styles, Right now, you probably say, I'm going to be the exact opposite, but we'll see in about 10, 15 years, and you might be looking back like, dang, I sound just like my mom. I sound just like my dad. My mom and dad used to do that to me when I was a kid. Oh, my gosh, I had all these rules. I didn't think I was going to be like this. So um, can it change from kid to kid? Sure. Sure it can. You know, there might be some kids that are very responsible and do the right thing and don't get in trouble. So they do have very permissive parents, and the kids have more freedom. Uh, maybe you have a kid that had gotten in trouble a lot, you know, with, with at school or with law enforcement. Uh, they may need to be an authoritarian parent. So it definitely depends on the kid. Um, but we do know some things that with the authoritative parenting style, if you if you give control to your kids somewhat, little by little as they grow up. They become motivated. They become self-confident. So authoritative parenting style is probably the best one to use. If you have little control over your life, authoritative, authoritarian parenting will give their kids little control. You start to see yourself as helpless and incompetent. You know, maybe you ask a question like, why won't my parents let me do this stuff? Like, I'm 17 years old. Come on. What do you think? I'm an idiot, mom, dad? Like, you don't think I can do this stuff? I No, I can. Um... And always remember, when you're a parent, rules should be consistent with predictable consequences. The time must fit crime, in the words of Snoop Dogg. Uh, how about different cultures and raising kids? Child rearing means raising your kids. Um, obviously, around the whole entire world, parents are not the same. They don't use the same parenting skills. Um, we probably have hundreds of different ways to deal with kids, to talk to kids, to help kids. Um, and some cultures put a premium on the independence. Some cultures put a more premium on community. So that changes the way that you're going to raise your kids. Uh, but the good news is, no matter where you live, no matter what culture, community, independence, whatever, what we know is if you love your child, if your child feels loved and they feel secure, secure base can return to you with problems and stuff. That's really all that matters. They're going to be just fine. All right. I got to go. I'm out. Love y'all.